Section 5.3 covers integers and it covers some of your basic operations as well as a few of the different properties of integers. We're not going to go over all of the different operations with integers because I believe that that's something you're pretty familiar with and I believe you can look through the text if you have some questions about that but most of the time the most questions that I get are operations with negative numbers so I will kind of remind you about some of these operations and we'll go over just a quick um, review of some of these examples. So let's just look at a few examples of this. So if you look at negative 16 times 4, if you have a negative number times a positive number, your answer will be negative. And so negative 16 times 4 is negative 64. Now if you have a negative number times a negative number, then two negatives will make a positive. And so whenever you do that, you're gonna get the same 64, but this time it's gonna be a positive 64. Now, if you look at a division, it works the same exact way. Um, you have a positive number divided by a negative number then you're going to get a negative answer. So 16 divided by negative 4 will give you negative 4. And then if you have three different things going on, so in this case we have negative 3, and then we have times negative 28 over negative 4. Now you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm going to choose to look at this fraction and I'm going to simplify that fraction by dividing it first and so I'm going to go ahead and do that um, so that's going to be negative 28 divided by negative 4 so two negatives will make a positive so that will become 7 positive 7 and then you have negative 3 times 7 which would be negative 21 Okay, so that's just a quick overview of operations with negative numbers. All right, the next thing we want to look at, absolute value. Absolute value can be considered as the distance from zero. So if you look at on a number line, the distance from zero, distance is always measured as a positive value. So if you think about that, when you're traveling, you can never travel a negative distance. You're always going to be traveling positive distance. The odometer in your car never goes backwards. It's always moving forwards. Even if you put it in reverse, it never goes backwards. It's always moving forwards. So just kind of think about that um, as absolute value. So the absolute value you will find using these straight sticks right here. Um, that is the notation for absolute value. That means you're going to take in whatever is in between here, in between those two sticks, they're wanting the distance from zero. So in here, we want to know 27. What is its distance from zero? Well, it's 27 units from zero. Now, what about negative 27? Negative 27 is 27 units from zero. So it is the same distance from zero, just in the negative distance. And so that works exactly the same way. Now, whenever we have a little bit more complicated problem here, in between here we have if you can kind of think of this as parentheses as well, if you have operations to do inside of the absolute value, you would do the mathematical operations on the inside first, and then you would take its distance from zero. So let's simplify this first. So we're going to have two negatives in between here. So we can simplify that, and it would become the absolute value of 27. 
which we've already said is 27. So that's no problem with that. Now what about this last example? This last example says the absolute value of negative 27 plus the absolute value of 27. Well, we've already said that the absolute value of negative 27 is 27. And then this is also 27. And so you would basically just say 27 plus 27, which is 54. Okay, so that's just a quick review of absolute value, which is distance from zero. So just remember that that is always positive. Now let's take a look at kind of an, um, an example of an order of operations that involves absolute value as well. And so remember that I said absolute value can be can kind of considered like parentheses. And so when you think back to our very first set of problems, whenever we had the order of operations, we have parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, and then um, addition, subtraction. So whenever we look at this, we're going to look at this um, absolute value, and then we have these brackets right here. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at these two different sets of parentheses first and do those sets of operations first. And so we're going to look at those two sets. So whenever we do that, um, let's take a look. We have negative 15 divided by negative 5 and negative 4 minus 11. And we need to do those operations first. So we did negative 15 divided by negative 5. That's a positive 3. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. And then this minus is just from this minus. I just brought it down. The absolute value stays with it. And negative 4 minus 11 is negative 15. Okay, so I just did those parentheses. Now I'm going to basically... All that I'm doing in the next step is that I took the absolute value of negative 15, which was 15. So everything else stayed exactly the same. I took all of these and I rewrote them exactly like I saw it. I took the 3 and brought it down. I brought down the minus sign and I just took the absolute value. So now I'm ready to look at the order of operations again. I have no more parentheses, no exponent. So now I'm ready to do multiplication and division. And so I see I have this division right here. And I have a negative 6 divided by 3. So negative 6 divided by 3, that would be, what would it give me? it would give me this minus 2. So that's where this minus 2 came from. So negative 6 divided by 3 gave me the minus 2. I brought down my negative 16. I brought down my minus 15. And then now I'm ready to do my addition and subtraction, which is the minus 16 minus 2 minus 15. And so I'm going to have minus 18 minus 15 and my final answer is negative 33. You're going to have a couple of questions on your homework um, where you're going to be asked to look at negative 1 to certain powers. So let's take a look at that. So when you take negative 1 and we square it, so just to remind you, that means that is negative 1 times negative 1. Now, negative 1 times negative 1, two negatives make a positive. So that equals 1. All right. Now, what happens whenever I have negative 1 to the third power? That means I'm going to multiply negative 1 by itself three times. So if I have two negatives make a positive, and then I multiply it by another negative, that means that this answer is going to be a negative 1. OK, 
way. So when I have an even power two, I got a positive one. When I get an, an odd power three, I got a negative one answer. So it turns out that this is gonna be a rule. Anytime you take negative one and you raise it to an even number, remember your even numbers are two, four, six, eight, and so on, your answer is gonna be one. And if you take negative one to an odd power, your answer is gonna be negative one. So what would be negative one to the 20th power? Well, 20 is an even number, so the answer would be one. What would be negative one to the 101st power? Well, 101 is an odd number, so that would be negative one. All right, so that is a rule that you need to know. So an even number is 2k where k is a natural number and an odd number is 2k plus 1 where k is a natural number so this is just a way of definition okay and you're going to see this a little bit on your homework and i didn't want you to get too confused about that so i wanted to kind of help you out a little bit um, on your homework the final example that I want to go over is the last homework problem that you have in this section. It says find a uh, finite subset of Z, which is the integers, that is closed for multiplication. So let me explain what this means, okay? So finite, um, so finite means that you can count it. Okay, so that means there's a countable number. So there's one, two, three, four, so on. Okay, subset means of the integers. So we're counting a subset of the integers. Now, if it's closed for multiplication, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at a closed subset. So let's look at a subset of this subset of the integers. So I'm looking at this subset one, two, the numbers one and two. So now for this to be a closed subset for multiplication, what that means is I'm gonna look at a couple of different things. So for multiplication, one times two, I can take all of the elements that are in here and I can multiply them, and the answer will have to be back in this subset. Okay, so let me explain that again. I can take any elements that are in here, multiply it by itself or any other element in here, and the answer is gonna be in the set. All right, so in other words, I took one, which is in the set, two is in the set and the answer two is also in the set so that works all right now one times one is one well that works that's great all of that was in there now i need to check two two times two is four but four is not in the set so, in other words, if this were closed for multiplication, four would also have to be in this set, all right? So, in other words, this is not closed. Okay, so this is not a closed set for multiplication. So, let me go over that one more time, okay? So, all of the elements, one and two, when I multiply them, so because they're asking for it to be closed for multiplication, when I multiply any of the elements either times themselves or times each other, the answers will also be in the set. So one times two, the answer was in the set, so that worked. One times one, 
the answer was in the set, but two times two, the answer was not in the set. So that means that this subset is not closed for multiplication. Now, I'm going to help you out and give you a big hint, and this is only for people who watch my video. So the hint is that you will find the answer. Um, there are multiple answers to this question, but the easiest answer will be to consider the numbers in binary form. So go back to the numbers that are in binary number form. So there are only two numbers that are in binary form. And if you will consider those two numbers that we used in binary form, then that might help you answer this question. All right, I hope that helps you out.